So I took a whole month off social media. I learned so much. I can't wait to tell you. I'm gonna break down everything I learned in this video. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Caitlin, I'm so excited you're here. This is a place where we like to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in on the behind the scenes of our everyday life. I'm excited about this video because um, it's kind of been a long time coming. A, a month of no social media. I'm gonna break down what it looked like, why I did it, and what were the wins and what were the takeaways. So why did I take a break? Um, well, I realized I have not lived my life without apps on my phone, social media apps, um, to check like ever since like 2009, or even if it wasn't on my phone, it was on my computer. I have been connected to social media, um, for over a decade. And I just have never experienced life the past 10 plus years without having that as a part of my life. And I just thought to myself, like, I don't know. I, it's hard to explain. Maybe it's my, the mom instinct. Maybe it's just being in business for 13 years, but I had a season where I just realized I, th I think I need a break. There wasn't any line in the sand. There wasn't some big blow up on my Instagram account. There wasn't, there was nothing that triggered this, like, I got to get off of here. It was this culmination of this feeling of just, it's too much. Like it's just too much. I realize like, I'm not taking a break from social media because social media is evil and awful. I'm taking a social media break because I know as an individual, as a mom, a wife, a business owner, I think it'd be really healthy for me to just step back. So I'm in a season in my business. I've been in business 13 years. Um, don't worry. I'm not like retiring. I'm not like shutting it all down. I just, I just know I can feel that like, even though things are going great, there's a new season like, or, or something's going to adjust. I don't know what it is. And I, I just felt the pressure, uh, in July, June and July, I felt the pressure of like my next, my, my vision casting, like what's next. It hasn't come to me yet. And I, and I don't know why, and I couldn't figure it out. And, um, with the encouragement of team members and, um, we have a, a life coach, they just all kind of made me aware that like, I am, I'm expecting this big aha moment to happen and to discover new things, but I'm not changing anything about my life. Like I'm expecting to have this big revelation. And yet I'm trying to come up with these new things still doing the day-to-day -day grind. And so one way that I thought I could create some white space is to step away from social media for a month. Um, we have a lot of friends who have done this that just rave about it. And I just had never done it. So I did it um, for myself. I did it for my business and I did it for future planning. It was the easiest way and the fastest way for me to be able to step back and create margin and white space in my life so that I could have more space to process new things. And it was mind blowing just how much it changed. All right. So how did it go? Well, um, I went to Starbucks. I told Michael, it's like, I'm going to go to Starbucks, get some work done, get a, get away from the house. And I sat down at Starbucks and I was like, you know what? I think I have like two days, maybe two days before, um, August begins. And that was going to be my, my month off. But I just decided sitting at Starbucks. I'm like, I'm going to do it right now. And it just, it felt like this huge, like I was jumping off a cliff. And I think back, I'm like, why was that such a big deal? But it felt so big, but I, found an image to use and wrote this paragraph and was like explaining, I'm, I'm just going to be gone for a month. I am signing off social media and here I go. Like, see you later. And I posted it and I like texted Michael. I'm like, it's done. <laughs> like, so dramatic. It's done. <laughs> so just to preface, I did not delete my account. I just took it off my phone and I didn't access it from my phone. So I removed, you can actually remove Instagram from your home screen. Um, so I didn't actually delete it. It still was on my phone, but we kept it on there because Michael would hop on and promote YouTube. We have such momentum going with YouTube and already pre-filmed things that when those videos were ready, Michael did a few posts, like just saying, Hey, this video is live, but, um, I did not access it on my phone. And I actually think it was good that it was still on my phone, just not on my home screen because I was tempted sometimes to just kind of open it up and just see a little, like what's going on. Um, and then I realized, Oh, someone's going to see that I was active 13 minutes ago. Like someone's going to be able to see that. And I decided, you know, no, I don't, I'm staying true to like, this is my rule. I'm not getting on Instagram. Um, and so, I also deleted Facebook off my phone and I found myself the first like three to four days, I would pick up my phone subconsciously and tap on the hole on my home screen where Instagram normally is. What is wrong? Like, that's weird. That is weird human behavior. So let me get into a few takeaways I had because I have so much to share. All right. Takeaway number one, I realized that 
I use social media, not just for numbing, like just mindlessly scrolling. I realized um, I was using it as a way to not deal with simple little things like, oh, we need to pick a date to get together with this friend. I don't really see anything on the calendar. I'm going to have to tell her I don't have anything to, no, I have no, no dates to offer her and oh, I don't want to deal with that. And I would click subconsciously, click out of my texting and like just go scroll because I just don't want to deal with the problem at hand. So I, I realized, wow, I am defaulting to this thing so I don't have to deal with other stuff. How much, how much of my life and my productivity is happening um, because Instagram is a part of my life? I realized that. Okay, takeaway number two, it completely, getting rid of social media on my phone completely eliminated my constant worrying about, am I on my phone too much with my kids? It instantly, that was gone. And if you are a mom of young kids, if you're a mom of older kids, if you're just a parent in general and you worry about like, how much do they see me on my phone? Like, am I present enough? When you delete social media, you immediately get that freedom. And that was amazing. It's probably one of my favorite things about taking a month off. It's just, I was so free from that. I'd never worried about it because I had nothing to look at. I was up to date on all like the family documentation stuff that I love. Now my family Instagram account, I still need to update a few things, but as far as like saving video clips on an app, um, so that we have like home videos from each year, like I did it every single night. Like I'm, I'm up to date still. Like it's amazing. Everything that matters to me as far as like documenting our life and organizing family photos, I, it was always done, right? I always got it done because there was nothing else distracting me. And that leads me to another point. Another point is, I realized like so much of what I wanted to get accomplished and so much of what I desired in my life was being secretly stolen by scrolling through other people's lives. And that, I just hate that. I, I hate that. So, um, that was another point. Um, I also realized I don't hate, I don't hate social media. I hate the addiction to social media right? There's got to be a way, and, and maybe this is a, another video for another time, but there's got to be a way to be a part of social media, to have that community, to have the impact and the influence. I, I think there's purpose in my impact online, but there's got to be a way to do it in a healthy way. We, we default to it. It's like, it's like what we do when we sit on the couch next to someone we love, we just scroll and it's happening to everybody. And I just feel like I needed to step away in order to recognize how much it was affecting me. Another takeaway was that it, as soon as I made my announcement and I told the world, I felt this immediate sense of like, I owe nothing to anybody. I don't owe anything to anybody. I am free. Like I said, to, it kind of, it's the same sense of like, when I go on maternity leave, everyone knows I just had a baby. No one expects anything of me on the outside world, in the business world. Like I am free. Um, so I think I, I felt this really because I was also saying, not only did I take um, a month off social media, I also took a month off work, um, which that's a whole other thing, but I just took a break from work and it felt just like this weight was lifted of like, Everyone knows that I'm not around, right? No one in a Facebook group expects me to respond. No one on Instagram expects me to, re to respond. No one's looking for my stories. No one's looking for my posts. No one. And, and I realized this was very eye opening um, that a lot of my stress in business comes from predetermined expectations other people have on me that I have decided. They never said these things, but I've decided that people expect this, 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 and this from me. And I believe that I start telling myself that I live with that as something that's true in my life. And then I show up with that expectation. And then I start telling myself that they expect this and I'm letting them down. Um, and then I live in that cycle. It's a pretty bad belief system. Like it's pretty serious. Uh, and so I recognize that by simply deleting Instagram, it made me aware that one, I don't know if all those beliefs are true. Like, I don't think people really have sh as strict of expectations, uh, on me online as I, as I thought, um, I think I made a lot of that up and it took me stepping away to realize just how heavy that really sat with me. So, um, I also, another takeaway was like just how much I got done right? How much I thought about like, Ooh, I need to do that. Let's just go do it. I didn't get distracted. Right. Um, I also thought, um, a lot about another takeaway was, um, I kept up with people via texting. I will say a negative was there were some things announced on face on, um, Instagram, like transitions friends made in their life, like kind of big announcements here and there that I kind of missed. And, um, 
and I, and, and I found out later, like, oh wait, like they went into this line of work or like, oh my gosh, they're pregnant. And I, I didn't see it and it felt a little weird, but then I realized like, you know what? I'm just going to text them, but I tell them congratulations through a text. Imagine that. And I had more personalized conversations and more opportunities to connect with friends because they couldn't just like something on social media. It was like truly connecting with friends instead of just like a little tap. Now, is it wrong to keep up with friends and family on social media? No, it's not wrong, but I just experienced, wow, like I really depend on social media to keep me connected with friends. And I don't think it's bad. It's just an observation. I found myself going to bed at night, not having anything to scroll through. So I got more sleep. (laughs) That's a huge win for a parent of three kids, four and under. Uh, I found myself sitting down to watch TV and actually watching TV with someone like with Michael. Um, Michael actually took off Instagram for a few weeks that I was off and that was awesome too. Um, yeah, a lot of, lot of really eye-opening things happened when I took this huge part of my life away. Last but not least, one takeaway was my screen time was cut in half, almost less than half uh, in a lot of ways. And that was a really cool thing to see. Like, wow, like just deleting these two apps really just diminished and, and reduced something that I just felt like was way out of control. All right, so was taking a month off social media worth it? 110%. Yes. Would I do it again? Yes, I plan on it. Do I have a plan moving forward? Um, I wouldn't say I have this strict plan moving forward, but I have made some conscious decisions that I think taking a set amount of time off per month would be really good for me, good for my kids, good for my marriage, good for just my well being and my productivity. Um, I, I think that coming back on social media was really fun because pe- it was really sweet. People were like, oh my gosh, you were missed. I'm like, I was, that's, I mean, it's just so funny to me. Like, what did you miss? Tell me more. <laughs> um, I, I learned a lot about trust. You know, there's a lot about removing yourself from something that has been a part of your life and a part of your business, trusting that it's going to be okay. I learned a lot about, uh, mental health. Uh, self care, even like I kind of hate that term because sometimes people really use it in like, kind of some crazy ways. But like it was self care to to walk away from social media. It was a decision I made for me, not for anybody else. And I learned a lot about putting myself first and kind of like setting the world and expectations and people aside and just doing something for me, which was really really good for me. And in turn, it served other people that were close to me really well. Now I will say something that was also very interesting that I realized was that once I got back on. I almost had a few days of like, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> like, I don't really know what to, I don't really know what to post. Um, I, I kind of said like, Hey guys, I'm back. And then I was like, I don't know what's next. And it, it's been good for me to really evaluate like, um, why am I sharing certain things? And am I sharing this because I want to share, um, something that is inspiring and uplifting and educational or entertaining, or am I just sharing this to show the world what I'm doing? right? Is it just a, a little bit of a flex, a little bit of a brag? I don't, I don't want to be that person on social media. I, I don't think those people grow or they do, but then it's not really a good engaging dynamic with your audience. It's just kind of this weird, like, Oh, they're really showing off. I don't want to be that person. And so I'm really filtering things through like, why am I posting things? Why am I sharing things? What is my purpose on social media? And I think really what I'm realizing, even just talking through this is that there's a, probably another video coming where I share a little bit more about like, what, what is the purpose of social media in my life? And what is the purpose of social media in my business? And when you get clear about those things, what it is and what it is not, then you can start to make goals and patterns, and you can start to show up in a way that you're making sure you stay in those, those sections, those boundaries, you're staying where you want to stay within the realm of what social media means to you. And you're not letting it take over parts of your life that it shouldn't take over and it doesn't deserve to take over. So an overall takeaway, just that you can walk away from this video. Like, what do you do with this information? Like, how do you take my experience and maybe help it to impact your life? I think this is what I would say to anybody. Social media is not bad. It's not evil. It's actually a really great, powerful tool that a business owner, especially someone in the creative field, someone in our world and our industry, we need this. Like I wish that I had Instagram back in, you know, the early days. I wish when I first started my business, I had a following on Instagram like I had now, because man, it is so vital to my business. But what I do think is that we need to maybe take some action steps towards being aware of how it's actually affecting us as a business owner. Um, 
I have a lot of people who have been in my DMs, a lot of people who have emailed or messaged and said, I'd love for my mental health, for my own self-care, I'd love to take a break, but there's just no way that I can. And I have so many thoughts about that because well, yes, it is so vital to have social media for business. It's also vital to be a healthy person. And if you're not a healthy person, you feel the weight of it, you know, you're saying I need to take a break, but you just keep pushing because you're so afraid of the business you're going to lose. My invitation to you would be to think through, right, but what if, what if the loss is actually greater if you just keep pushing, if you just stick with the unhealthy patterns, if you never step back and realize how it's really affecting your life, your family, your mental state, your happiness, your contentment. If you don't dive into those things, what is the long-term loss, right? So I, I don't think social media is a bad thing. I think it's something that we need to reevaluate. And I think there are ways to run your business online and be on social media, be active, share your life, share your business, and do it in a way that is healthy for you and healthy for your audience and healthy for your business. But sometimes I think it takes taking a step back to recognize how exactly things need to be tweaked or adjusted. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that if, if you have struggled with social media in your life, maybe this was the nudge you need. Don't take a month off, take a week off. See what happens, see what you learn. I guarantee you, your eyes will be open. So thanks for tuning in. If you want more content from us, make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.